We're not ten made clean, and where are the nine? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We might miss this at first glance, but when our Lord says, where are the nine, his sacred heart was wounded. He had done these men a great favor. They were lepers. Okay? Who knows how, for how many years. He healed them, and they kept going their way. Much like the gospel last week, where the priest and the Levite will keep going their way, even though they saw someone there in need. They saw Christ in need and did not answer. And only the Samaritan helped him. Of course, this week, it's the Samaritan who comes back. Right? The unclean ones, supposedly, right? Half Jew, half Greek, uh, or half um, Gentile, we'd say. And oh, the Jews aided Samaritans for that. Um, so they were of, of pure blood, we say. But the point is that our Lord, he was very sad that these men had not come back to give thanks. Not because he was proud, not because he demanded to be recognized as in our wounded pride sometimes can happen, but simply because he loved them. And he had given them this gift, and they kept going away. And a couple things we can say about this. First of all, we read in St. Thomas Aquinas in the Summa, he says there are three forms of ingratitude. The lowest level, or the one least offensive, is when we receive something, but do not give back to the giver. Now, most of the time, if you give something, we're not necessarily expecting anything back. But if God is the giver, we want to give back to him, because we see, if we really understand what he has given on the cross, and in the sacraments, and, and just in our lives, our circumstances, all we want to do is pour ourselves out to give, make ourselves an oblation with God's permission in response to his love. Love for love. Charity for charity. Okay. If we don't do that, we're guilty of the first level of the gratitude. The nine lepers today who were cured were guilty of the second level of ingratitude, is when you receive a gift and you don't even say thank you. Okay? You don't even come back to God having recognized the gift and say thank you, Lord, for what you have done for me. Okay, so, so we'll be more about this in a moment. And that's the, the lepers were guilty of this. Now, they did not have the leprosy come back to them as a result of their ingratitude. Because in some, some way, they still recognized, they still realized that what Christ had given for them. Even though they kept going on, they did recognize it. But the third level of ingratitude, as St. Thomas would say, is when we are given a gift, and we don't even realize it. We don't even recognize that we've been given this gift. In that case, like for Holy Communion, if we receive without recognizing the body and blood of our Lord, we injure our own condemnation, and then leprosy of sin comes back. Okay, so this is the worst form of ingratitude. Uh, and we're more often guilty of it than we realize. There's so many gifts we're given by God every day, and not only do we not say thank you, we don't even try to remember the fact that God has done this for me. This little bird sitting right here is God saying hello to me. It might sound a little corny, but it's, it's actually true, right? Um, everything, there'll be a sunset yesterday on my way back, the 11th hour, okay? And we're getting close to Bakersfield. The sun was this beautiful orange disc, and I had to really thank God for it and try to remember that even these little signs of his presence are little gifts to try to help us to love him more and to recognize him in all things. St. Francis was a master of this. St. Teresa of Avila, a master of this. Uh, so many of the saints, masters of this. And then in recognizing God in his little things, we're more prepared to recognize him in the big ones. Because if we don't recognize him in the big ones, we're in trouble. And that's where we can lose God's grace. Not just actual graces, but sanctifying graces. So, uh, when we receive... Holy Communion, to make that act of faith. This is not just, it's not a symbol. It's not just a sacrament. It is Christ the Lord I am receiving, body, blood, soul, and divinity. And to be profoundly overcome 
with gratitude and sorrow for our sins as a result of this. Um, and then the pledge to do more, the pledge to give back, which, so we avoid all the forms of ingratitude, uh, all three. And then not only do we recognize what we've been given, we're thankful for what we've been given, and then we go, et and est, right? Then we go and then we become saints and we make saints. Uh, so, failure to do this is not a light matter. Because God is very jealous, as we said before, of the sacraments, especially of the Holy Eucharist, which is purchased by our Lord's precious blood. So he's very jealous for it. And if we, we don't take the time to at least try, I mean, feelings are not important. We might be really, really tired. We might be really, really dry. Just reading from the Invitation of Christ today about how we offer to God the sacrifice of our dryness, of our tiredness, when he gives us his gifts. Because we're not, it's not about how we feel. It's not about our dispositions. It's about giving honor to God because he is God. Right. And he's given himself. He's given, God has given God to us. <laughs> so when we receive Holy Communion, then we should, throughout the day, give thanks, return and give thanks, return. Like each time, not just once, like the good leper today, who was cleansed, but actually many times coming back. And let Christ say, okay, go on. <laughs> so, um, and then also for confession, important that we try to remember after we confession, not to rush into our, what do you say, our, our not a contrition, but uh, our penance, penance that we do. But first to give thanks, to thank God, especially if we were guilty of mortal sin, that we no longer are on our way to hell. If we were guilty of venial sin, Lord, even venial sin was an infinite offense against you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to go to confession and making a good confession, I pray. And now I can make my, do my penance as an offering to you for, for what you have done for me. Even though it's required, you make an offering of it. Um, and then after you do it, then you thank him again. And then you go on with the rest of the day. But then we don't want to ever forget even so much as one confession, especially any confession we've ever made in which we feel to be mortal sin. Because it's very important that uh, we never, we, we always have this universal sorrow for our sins. Okay? Uh, it's necessary, just like St. Peter, with all the crevices under his eyes from the tears that he wept night and day, even after Christ had confirmed him in the faith again and said, feed my sheep, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. And he did that, he still wept. Basically every day the rest of his life. So Mary Michael did the same thing. But even if we have gotten to the point where we can weep for our sins we've been forgiven of, us doing it not only cleanses us more and more, like the psalmist says, wash me more and more from my guilt, the Lord, but it helps to obtain the graces necessary, the super abundant merits of the saints. We can be a part of that and actually obtain graces for our loved ones who have fallen away at that point. And, and some of them may need it. And so um, we do not want to disappoint our Lord. Just as importantly, we do not want to receive the grace of God in vain, as St. Paul warns in one of his epistles. Failure to grow daily in a spirit of gratitude will make us susceptible to falling back into sin and lukewarmness. Without the true appreciation of sanctifying grace, we begin to lose actual grace, which in turn will make us lose sanctifying grace. Yep, I need to help. So if we're going to receive the sacraments frequently, be ready to do the work necessary to stay in the state of grace and be ready, even when you don't feel like it, say thank you anyway and make resolution for some, even one sacrifice especially when we feel least inclined to do so, because that's where the merit is. Okay. God is generous in giving his gifts, as we said, but he is also jealous of them because of the cost. We should often think about the many graces and privileges we have received from Almighty God that will counter any bitterness of soul we might otherwise experience because of our disappointments and our discouragements. And, and, and sadness that comes to us at times from the, the trials of life. Such thoughts will also prepare us more worthily to receive the sacraments and be more grateful upon the reception. In this way, we become less like the nine unmindful lepers and more like the one who gave joy to the sacred heart. Okay. 